Oi, oi. Hello and welcome to the first Cheltenham video of the 2024-2025 season for gg.co.uk. Again, this video has kindly been sponsored by Boyle Sports. So the C word's coming out before Christmas and I'm quite happy about that, to be honest with you. We're going to talk a little bit in this video about some of the different divisions between um as I split across the Cheltenham Festival. Don't really need to talk about the changes or any of those bits in there. This will be probably quite a fairly quick skim just to give us a standpoint in there. But my anti-post book will be back. Starting from Tuesday, I will be reviewing action that's happened over the weekend with my thoughts of what that may mean for targets through the season and building up to the spring festivals. It will have a massive steer towards Cheltenham, of course, but there may be preference that I would suggest for, I don't know, chances at the Dublin Racing Festival, chances at Aintree, chances at Punchestown. There are obviously lots of opportunities for the good horses when it comes to the springtime. We're also going to look at anti-post bets as the weeks go on. So I did this last year. There was quite a few that were put up. There was some that was done more non one no bet, but we made a profit on the anti-post book. And while obviously the aim is to try and make money when it comes to it, I guess the purpose of what I write on the Tuesday is just to air my thoughts with you guys of things that I've seen at the weekend, things I'm looking forward to coming up. And it might just be that that's not necessarily a one-stop shop because there's plenty of content out there that's worth reading. But if you just had, I don't know, a 20-minute break or something like that at work and you wanted to have a quick read through it, it might not even take you that long. It's probably been more like a 10-minute read. It will give you a bit of an overview of what it is and it's an easy thing to come back and forth to. So with the anti-post selections that will be put in that piece of content... Of course, we want to try and make some money, but I think it's a case of I'll try and think, like, I'll, try, I'll try and delve in and try and find a little bit of what I would class as value. And I know that is in the eye of the beholder, but I will try and explain where I see things. And also from a timing perspective, it may be that if we were to do the column on a Tuesday and a horse is due to run that weekend, that could be a little bit too close to it. So with experience in betting anti post for such a long period of time, I'm hopefully going to be able to preempt a few market moves if we need to think that way across it won't necessarily always be a bet every single week i will try my best to see if i can do that not just for the sake of putting something up but it's quite nice isn't it if we can follow things through the season but if there's periods where there's no value or there's nothing to be had in there it will still be a i think worthwhile uh, article to find out my thoughts from the previous weekend and what's coming up so We've had lots of stuff going on, haven't we? So this isn't purposely going to be to talk about the weekend. We've just had, obviously, Brave Man's game that I quite fancied to go really well in a Charlie Hall chase. Didn't manage to win today. Quite a poor performance, I'd imagine, in my mind. But that's, I don't know, this is very much reflecting the evening of. So probably being a little bit biased. Look, the real whacker is a good horse. Sam Brown finished a little bit too close for me to mark that one up. But look, they weren't really on my radar or mine for like a cheltenham type festival thing or all spring big festivals. That was... A good day in the sun for the real whacker. Um, not very good day in the sun for a horse like a brave man's game. But of course, just before that in down roll, we did have Jerry Colomb um, getting beat in the champion chase. And Gordon did say after he didn't really look like him throughout. And I thought similarly, like Sam Ewing a couple of times came up on the horse. Um, yeah, it didn't look like the best partnership, but like it is what it is. It was a very disappointing performance from Jerry Colomb. I'm a big fan of his. I thought he ran well in the Gold Cup. He was sort of to be upgraded, so... Maybe viewers of my own personal channel, Chelt Mental, will have seen that I've um, I've had a little bit on Jerry Colom and he plays for the Gold Cup. Look, we'll run through some of the races now. And I can give thoughts on there, but it's, there's a there's a probable probable spoiler alert for Tuesday. I would still be considering putting him in there. Look, we've had lots of horses that might blow out a little bit at the start of the season can be and can be forgiven something if it's priced into their their price, then I could still consider it. But again, I'm talking about this the evening of, so who knows what will come around by Tuesday. But look, if we look at some of the I guess more obvious markets. I don't want this to be a very long video because we're going to talk through things as the season. But as it stands, there are a few markets that are possibly be very different to how they have been in previous years. So with the Turners now gone, we've now got the novice handicap chase back, comes at two and a half miles. The, the big thing with the Turners over the last few years is it's provided a an option and an opportunity for Arkle prices and Brown Advisory prices to potentially become inflated because they would be priced up as though they might be considering a Turner's option. And if you knew your onions or had a big enough opinion, you may say there's no chance they were going for the two and a half miler and therefore you might have got a price somewhere else. So 
Everything's a bit skinly pride. Bally Bowman with the staple example, wouldn't he? Five to two for an article, six to one for a Brown advisory. Ultimately, he's, it's dictated that wherever he goes, he's going to be favourite as long as he's novice chasing. Willie's thrown a spanner in the work with a Morgiana entry, but it's not unlike Willie to do that with, with his horses. He just wants to keep like all options open. And I guess there's a big thing with that that... Constitution Hill will be making his reappearance in the fight in fifth. Obviously, people have different views on how Nicky Henderson handles the situations. But at the end of the day, they are professionals. We trust them to do what is best by the horse. I know we like to see lots of horses run frequently, but there are plenty of horses that do, I guess, get wrapped up in cotton wool that don't seem to get as much slander as a Constitution Hill does. But I guess it's one of those, isn't it? If you could have the chance to see Messi and Ronaldo playing against each other every single week, people would probably want to see it. But then if you have too much chocolate, you get fat, don't you? So too much of a good thing isn't always a good thing. But obviously, Constitution Hill this season, fingers crossed he's back to somewhere near his best. But like I say, with the Morgiana entry for Ballyburn and just lots of thoughts. Golden Eddie even said this weekend about brighter days ahead, not saying that's where she'll go. But he was saying she could be like a champion hurdle they've played so many times in the race. A lot of people are going to wait and see what Constitution Hill looks like, I guess, on debut before they make their decisions on what they're going to do through the season in terms of him and the champion hurdle division, because that's a big, wide open sector. Now, look, let's play devil's advocate and say that Constitution Hill comes back and just slams everyone, looks better than ever. You're going to start getting a lot of horses running scared, which means the mayor's hurdle market might take a little bit of a shake up, even though they're awfully short at the top of the price. Both bright, brighter days ahead and lost him out for that market already. The Arkle market and the novice JC type things could take a shake up because look, Sergino sounds like he's going to stay over hurdles. And obviously, Henderson would still like to have a, I guess, a safety net or a, or a blanket in there, wants to go win races. And while Bouverdeau was probably the second string for chasing at the time without your being around, he did start a horse over fences, didn't he, that came back to win a champion hurdle. So look, there's all manners of opportunities that could happen. And at this case, and at this stage in the season, we're all just having our opinion and what we think is going to happen throughout the season. And we all know that none of us actually know what is going to happen. So we will see. We had Gaelic Warrior that was favourite for a stairs hurdle last season that William Mullins said would happen to be the route. Ends up going over fences and then he's favourite for a Brown Advisory. Then he ends up being favourite for Turners and then he ends up going off as favourite and winning an Arkle. He's very niche just because of the type of horse that he is, but... There's just opportunities for lots of this type of stuff to happen throughout the season. There's lots lots of good horses dotted about. This season started off really nicely, isn't it, with Dan Skelton firing out some good darts. Um, I know there's the talk about Paul Nichols' form. It is probably the worst he's been, I think Paul Keeley said, this century, um, like at the start of the season. But he, he knows what he's doing. He's been a champion trainer. But there is a there is a chance. There could be a change in the guard. It could be now that if... He doesn't perform as well as he has done in previous years. He might not be sent as much ammunition. Nicky Henderson always seems to get the like a, a good bunch of novices and, and good horses to go with him. But you do just wonder if there is a bit of a change in there. But from a com competitive perspective, it's nice. Like Dan Skelton's more than happy to roll the dice and throw a horse in there. And now he's getting the ammunition. I think it will ramp up the British side of, of racing. It'll bring up the British standard. So... I think we could probably we could probably leave it there. As I said, throughout the whole season, there's going to be a lot of different markets to talk about, lots of different races where I can give you an insight in there. I will feature it as we go through the season. So if it feels like there are times of the year when we're going to have lots of novice chases coming out, I might split that division up as a talking point on the article. I do like to waffle as I talk, you know, but in the writing stuff, it's easier to express it and get it out. But it's quite in-depth in there. Um, if you guys have got any thoughts or interesting points you think that would be worth monitoring through the season or picking up in that column on a Tuesday, then please do feel free to write a comment on there and let me know your thoughts, things that you could find interesting, things that, I don't know, do, do get done, but you're a bit bored of because they're a bit overdone. Let me know. I'll, I'll take all the feedback on board and we'll try and shape the column to make it as best as possible for you guys. But look, Cheltenham is just round the corner with a November meeting. It won't be long now until we do get through to March. We're into November already. We've only got four months now until it gets through to Cheltenham. So, there's lots of good racing to go on before that, and that will be the purpose of the article too. I'll be talking about big events that are kind of the weekend, eyes like on certain types of races and, and certain types of horses, and we'll also be reviewing what's happened in the previous weekend. So look, there'll be lots of Cheltenham chat coming out. 
mostly it's going to be going into that column on a Tuesday from there rather than banging them out on the on the uh, channel with videos. But there might be certain like timestamps in the season where it'd be worth me doing another one of these. Who knows, a Q&A and all that sort of stuff with you guys. So like I say, get in the comments below and let me know what might work for you guys. Make sure you're liking the video because it's always nice to be nice. And it makes sure you subscribe to the channel and we will see you guys again very soon.